Good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Favi, and welcome to Arrows DIY. On my channel, I like to do Dollar Tree DIYs, high-end dupes, thrift flips, and the occasional trash to treasure. This is another episode in my spring series, and I'm so excited to be teaming up with my sweet friend Becky from Kinda Shabby. We got together to offer you guys shabby chic DIY inspiration. So I hope you guys enjoy and find a lot of ideas for your home decor. If you like unique home decor on a budget, be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that bell so you don't miss another episode or when I go live. Please be sure to check out Becky's channel, Kinda Shabby, but I'll talk more about that in a little bit. If you're coming over from her channel, I wanna welcome you. My name is Favi and let's get started. For DIY number one, I'm gonna be using this birdhouse. I got this on clearance at Michael's and can you believe this was just a dollar? I was floored. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and give this a little makeover. I was lucky enough to find two of these at my Michaels. So this is my second birdhouse on my channel. My first birdhouse was for winter and uh, I can link that video if you're interested. So what I decided to do was I used this chalk paint in white Adirondack and I watered it down. So this paint mixture is gonna show the wood grain through and I ended up painting the entire f sides of the birdhouse in this color. And this is relatively easy. You just wanna make sure to keep your coats nice and thin and even so that it looks nice throughout. And yeah, of course, take off that sticker. <laughs> so I just continued painting all around the house. Once it was fully painted, I decided to paint the roof in a solid white color. And I really like how it turns out at the end. But if you're new around here, I'd like to welcome you. My name is Fabi. I am a DIY mother of five and I love crafting and just making fun home decor. Uh, I've also started crafting live on Wednesdays, so be sure to um, stick around and um, join me as I craft live on Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So as you can see, I just gave the roof one full coat and I really like how this birdhouse turns out. So I hope you stick to the end so that you can see all of the projects and the final reveal. And I'm obsessed with birdhouses. On this channel, I'm obsessed. I think I've made about 15 birdhouses <laughs> in my first year on YouTube. So now I'm gonna go in with this black color. It's a multi-surface paint by Folk Art. Use any black you have on hand, um, but I just love the coverage on this Folk Art line of paints. So I'm gonna go ahead and I paint the little perch in this black color as well as the bottom edge. And to help me do this, I just used a small, flat paintbrush and it kind of helped me um, get this bottom painted nice and neat and if I make a mistake it's totally fine um, I'm not too worried about it because I do want it to be kind of shabby right so I just do this step all over the bottom of the birdhouse once that's all done I also decided to add this little feature to the bottom edge of the scallops of the roof and I used the same little paintbrush and I did want it to go over a tiny bit um, to give it that enamel look so that's kind of what I was going for on this birdhouse my spring decor this season is mostly black and white with pops of color throughout and I have a lot of polka dots and just fun decor my children really enjoy it so <laughs> Yeah. All right, so I go ahead and I paint the bottom of the birdhouse as well because I'm planning to put it on a candlestick. So you are able to see the bottom of the birdhouse depending on where you put this in your home. Just keep in mind that you do have to paint the bottom if you're gonna have it up on a shelf. So now I'm gonna take this paintbrush and I'm just gonna paint a cute little detail at the top of the roof um, to kind of symbolize the buzzing flying around of a bee and I hope you like it. I really like this detail. 
and I'm just using the edge of the paintbrush. So I just took the paintbrush and I kind of rotated it sideways. But you could totally do a, um, you could use a Sharpie to do this. You could do a Sharpie marker. You could use a pencil, maybe draw it out before you do this part. But um, I love making fun home decor and I give myself a lot of grace. And I think you guys should do too. If you do decide to paint, if you make a little mistake, it's nothing that you can't fix with just reapplying the base co color, you know? So don't worry too much um, about perfect. So once that detail is painted on the roof, we're going to move on to the bow. So I took my favorite ribbon I got at Michael's. It has a honeycomb pattern on it. And then I just added a few strands of lace ribbon that I got from BB Craft. And then I added a single no sorry a double bow a small little double bow in the front there with some uh, grow gain ribbon from Dollar Tree but this is just my simple little shabby chic bow I know it's different but I love making unique home decor <laughs> and hopefully you find some ideas here you've never seen before so now I'm going to add this little button in the center there. It's from my mom's button collection that she, well, that I inherited. So that's very special to me. And I'm gonna go ahead and hot glue this bow right to the top of this birdhouse. And I think it's so cute, but we're not finished yet. No, no, no. We have to fluff this bow for 10 billion years. And then I'm gonna put a little curve formation to the tails of the ribbon that way just making them feel a little bit more playful and whimsical um, and I just put like an S shape in the ribbon tail of the bow now I took this little B that I had made out of hot glue and I just used one of my silicone molds I'll show you in another DIY coming up uh, what the mold looks like but I just used some hot glue and the mold and once that dried I painted it in this gold color called Mayan gold by folk art treasure gold so next I just took a candle stick that I thrifted not too long ago and I just hot glued it on top of that now my sweet friend Becky from kind of shabby this is her channel and she does kind of shabby but always chic projects. You could find the best shabby chic projects for year round inspiration. Please be sure to check out her channel in the description box below as well as my comment box. You will not be disappointed. So for this next project, I'm going to be using this wooden square plaque that I got at the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to paint both sides in this white Adirondack chalk paint. Once that's fully painted, I'm gonna go ahead and use these wooden appliques. I got these wooden appliques from BB Craft. I could also link them in the description box below if you're interested in getting some for yourself, but I thought these were so beautiful. And I was just, I have two more to use for future projects, but today I'm so excited to put these on. I'm amazed at how well these appliques upgrade any project and make it so much more special. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna paint with a small paintbrush. Well, I started with a small paintbrush and it was just taking forever. So I upgraded to a bigger paintbrush after about two minutes of this. And um, the wider paintbrush did a lot better and I also watered down the chalk paint so that it can glide further and get into all those little nook and crannies without caking up this um, applique. I didn't want the paint to get clumpy or anything, so it's very important to keep your paint very thin, and water is amazing to do that. I painted both sides in that white color. Now I'm gonna use this gift wrap tissue, like the gift tissue from the Dollar Tree, and it has the cutest little polka dot pattern on it. I used a thin layer of Mod Podge as you can see on a paintbrush and I just painted on a very thin layer. 
I don't recommend using this paintbrush because it does lose kind of, it kind of loses a little bit of those hairs as you use it. So I would recommend using the sponge applicator. I just use this paintbrush because I ran out of sponge applicators. I like to get the sponge brushes from Dollar Tree and use those when I decoupage. So as you can see, I start at the top and I just slowly and gently tap it down, um, section by section. I start at the top and work my way down, um, very carefully, very slowly, making sure to get the Mod Podge all the way to the edge once that's, I set that aside to dry. Now I'm going to be painting these appliques with this yellow color called Sunflower by Folk Art, and it's so beautiful. But I'm only gonna paint the back in this color. So just be very careful when you are painting the back because um, it could drip through the little holes there. So just use a little bit of paint and just lightly brush it. And I was okay if a little tiny bit of that yellow went to the other side, because I think that it kind of looks cool in my opinion, so I didn't mind it. So once the back of those appliques were painted, I set it aside, and now I'm just gonna sand paper the edges of this so that there's a nice clean edge on our wooden piece. Now this is gonna be a sign, a bee theme sign. If you don't know, I'm obsessed with bees. I think bees are so beautiful. I also love sunflowers on my channel. And um, when you are using the sandpaper, just be sure to always stroke away from you and downward. That way you get a nice clean edge. So once everything was dry, I wanted to apply these appliques. <laughs> so I just added a little bit of hot glue. I use Gorilla Hot Glue. And I'm just gonna go ahead and center that. To center it, I just placed my thumbs on the same exact spot on both sides of the applique and then kind of just glued it on. I centered it the best I could with my eye. So I basically just put both of my thumbs on the same spot and then centered it to that. I hope you can see what I'm saying. It's really not that difficult. Why am I making this such a big deal? I don't even know. All right, so I press it on like that and that's how both sides are looking. One side is more playful, the other is more traditional. I love making two-sided decor so I can, you know, turn it around as I see fit. And now I wanted to add a little bit more of a regal finish. So I took my favorite gold color called Mayan Gold and a little paintbrush and I'm just lightly brushing the edges ever so lightly so that we do accentuate some of the decorative features here but we don't want it to get too heavy so I try to keep it as light as possible on your project you could do whatever you think is best so if you want to go heavy go heavy if you want to paint the whole thing gold paint the gold paint everything gold paint the curtains gold I am a strong advocate of doing what you think is best for your project. So that's just what I do here. I just go around and add a little bit all around the edges and I try to focus on the areas that were more raised. And again, I'm barely touching the corners. Now once I did that, I'm gonna take these rub-on transfers from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to make a sign. So I cut out the letters to spell out the word honey. And then before I adhere, before I rub on the transfers, the letters, I'm gonna paint this wood piece that I also got at the Dollar Tree. And I got this one during the fall season. And I'm gonna paint it in the same sunflower yellow color. And I'm going to hot glue it right to the center like so. Once that was adhered, I went ahead and I decided to rub on the letters, to transfer the letters onto the sign. So to transfer the letters, I just followed the word fresh and I kind of just lined up those letters to the bottom of that word. 
and it's fairly simple to do. I just used a craft stick to rub it and that worked out pretty well. So I would recommend using a craft stick or anything that just has a sharp edge on it. And these are very, very um, forgiving. You just wanna be sure to be very sure about your placement before you press it down completely. But I think it's coming out cute. I'm still amazed at how those wood appliques upgrade a simple piece of wood. So now I'm gonna take another one of those candlesticks and I'm just gonna put some hot glue to the corner of it. And I don't use E6000 because I do not want a permanent hold. But if you want a permanent hold, definitely use the E6000. Now that little B picture there, I just printed it out on my printer on regular printer paper and then I fussy cut it with a pair of detail scissors. And then I Mod Podged it on. I'm not sure what happened to that footage, but um, I Mod Podged it on the same way that I did with the polka dot paper. So nothing fancy there. Now this is the mold I was telling you about. It's by Prima Redesign and it is my favorite mold of all time. So if you are interested in this mold, I will also have it linked in the description box below. And um, I love to do giveaways all the time. Um, and this was actually offered up in a giveaway not too long ago. But be sure to subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss any new episodes, you don't miss any of my crafting live sessions, and you don't miss any of the giveaways. So be sure to hit that bell twice. Now, once that was all done, I just took some of my greeneries from my stash, and I'm just gonna add some greeneries on top to help it feel like spring. I will change out these greeneries once we hit summer, and probably again once we hit fall. So I love using um, bee decor year, year round. Uh, well, not winter, but whenever I can use a bee decor, I will. <laughs> a bee decor piece. Wow, guys, I cannot talk today. Apologies. So I just used hot glue, and I'm putting them, as you can see, right on top of that sign and I just went with blue and yellow for the florals and I think it's super duper cute this flower here is my favorite from Dollar Tree and it's called Queen Anne's Lace oh my goodness that is the most beautiful flower I think but anyways that's how it's turning out I love it and I added another little bee on top as you can see and then I put some hot glue right there to make it look like honey is dripping out. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And here's the other side with the bee. But as you can see, one side is more playful, the other one is more traditional and fancy. Let me know which one's your favorite side in the comments down below. Now this is our final DIY for today, and this is a thrift flip. So I found this at a thrift store not too long ago, and it actually had some keys inside, but I've already used the keys in another DIY. I could link that video above here. It was the Christ is Risen video where I made the keys to heaven um, that, you know, it was another vintage piece. So this one, I don't really want to call it shabby chic, but I guess it's more vintage shabby. I don't know, guys. I don't know. I love mixing different home decors. So anyways, I don't know what to call it, but I like it. So I took this scrapbooking paper and it was the perfect size already. I didn't have to cut it, which was great. And I just centered it right on top of the back piece. And once that was centered, I just added a little bit of hot glue to it because it had that cushion backing and I didn't want to take off that cushion backing because I figured it would help hold all the pieces when I put it back into the shadow box. So I didn't take off the cushioning because I liked the fact that that would help keep everything nice and snug inside the frame. So as you can see here, I'm just adding hot glue all around, only on the corners because it doesn't really, I just need it to be in place. It doesn't need to um, be super secure. 
So once I have this paper, this paper is from the Modern Farmhouse paper pack. I've shown many times in other videos, but it's from Michaels if you're interested. Now I took some of these wooden square plaques from the Dollar Tree and they just happened to be the perfect size for this. So I was so happy about that. And now I'm just going to um, Mod Podge some paper onto it. So this is the paper that I got. It's from another paper pack by Maggie Holmes. And I shared this in a recent video unboxing. My video is called Craspire Wax Seal, if you're interested. I can link that video here if you wanna see what I got in my friend mail. And I just picked this pretty blue paper because I figured it was more of a neutral color. I know it's blue, but it's more of a year round color. I don't know. But anyways, I think it's beautiful. So I just cut it down to size off camera and I'm just going to Mod Podge it on. It's very simple. I just put a little bit of Mod Podge. Actually, I put a little bit more Mod Podge because the scrapbook paper needs something to hold on to. It's very thick. So you do want to go a little tiny bit heavier on the Mod Podge than you did with the printer paper and the uh, gift wrap paper earlier. And I just used um, another, the other wood plaque to kind of seal the project together, to press it together. And then once everything was dry, I went ahead and I sanded the corners and the edges. So then I printed this pattern I found on Pinterest. I thought it was so beautiful. Um, if I can, I will try my best to link this PDF so that you guys could also use the same one if you're planning to do the same project. But I am just going to cut it out and Mod Podge it like so. I also added some lace trim around the border, as you can see. And this lace is from BB Craft as well. I'll, I'll see if I can remember to link it in the comment in the description box below. All right, so then I'm using the stencils that I got from the Dollar Tree. This is the first time I've ever used a stencil, but I think it was the perfect project. It, I'm just gonna write be brave, be kind, be you, and be, what's the other one? I don't even remember, but you'll see it in a second. I just positioned them, kind of try to center them the best that I could. Oh, be you, okay. Um, but I just used the stencil. And I've seen it at many Dollar Trees, so you might be able to find it um, where the stickers are in the Crafter Square section. So once they were all on there, I just um, hot glued them in position. So I just put the shadow box back together. And I just used the pen for the stencil. So it's fairly simple, very easy to do. I like how it turned out, but I want to know what you think in the comment box below. Please let me know which one was your favorite. I love them all, really. Um, and I'm not, you know, saying that in a braggy way. It was just a lot of fun to make these. And I am so thankful to all my subscribers, new subscribers, loyal subscribers, faithful subscribers. Guys, you are the best. And you guys brighten up my day every time you leave a comment in the comment box below it really really does make my day so I hope you guys enjoyed these uh, projects today and um, I hope you give them a try and if you do please tag me on Instagram my handle is at arrows DIY I would love to see what you made so that's how it turned out and be sure when you do this that you <laughs> You make sure that your sign is the right way because I had to go back and redo it. I hot glued them to the wrong configuration. But it's not a big deal because I'm not hanging it on the wall right now. But if you want to hang your project on the wall, make sure that your hanger is in the wrong in the right position. Mine is just on a shelf at my house. Another th uh, thrifted item. But guys, I love how it turned out. I left it kind of simple. I didn't want to do anything else to it because it was already kind of busy. But um, yeah, here are all the projects. This is how they turned out. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got an idea or two to inspire you in your home decor. 
in your bee home decor. And if you don't like bees, do it with butterflies, do it with ladybugs, whatever you want. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate every single one of you. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit that bell so you don't miss another episode. Share with your friends and family. And special thank you to Becky from Kinda Shabby. I'm going to link her video in the comment box below. Be sure to check it out and let her know I sent you. All right, guys, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. God bless. Catch you on the next one. Bye. If you like this video, here's some others you might enjoy.